seeing that Maryland and Capital Region commuter car is fairly common along with the New Jersey Transit and Boston area commuter cars that used to come through here. Seeing a visitor from the Florida Deep South is as rare as hen's teeth. Note the BBRX reporting mark in the windows of both cars. That's the reporting mark of the Bombardier Incorporated Transportation Equipment Group. Now I've also heard it pronounced as Bombardier, so pick your preference. Potato, potato. Indeed, passenger cars can sometimes be seen in the manifests of freight trains. These are non-revenue moves for the car owners, but they are revenue moves for the freight railroads involved. There are several reasons that commuter and passenger equipment may show up on a freight train. A car being delivered from a factory to a transit authority owner hundreds or even thousands of miles away is one example. Or passenger cars being sent to and from repair or refurbishment is another. When it occurs, Passenger car movements are usually billed as passenger car, empty, or moving on its own wheels. One obscure and long gone example of commuter cars on freight trains was the mainline Georgia Railroad mixed freights and Macon branch trains which were operated up to 1983. The main purpose of this service was said to be to help keep a tax exemption in effect for the railroad. The trains averaged around 120 cars and the Macon branch trains used heavyweight paired window coaches. In the passenger train era, many carriers operated mail and express trains so as to keep the head in work off of their flyers and there were many railway express agency cars that looked like freight box cars but actually had running gear that was fully compatible for passenger operations. Here in northeastern Pennsylvania, passenger cars being moved in freight trains used to be a common occurrence stretching as far back as the early 2000s. One restriction that's typically applied was that there was a trailing tonnage limit placed on the passenger cars and for that reason they would usually be at the rear of the train. New Jersey Transit cars for example were always on the rear and because New Jersey cars were usually considered gallery cars they were subject to the high and wide rules as well. Other cars that showed up in the area were those from the Maryland Area Regional Commuter Service or better known as MARC which services the Metropolitan, Washington DC and Baltimore, Maryland areas. Another common car were those from the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority or MBTA as it's better known. Amtrak superliners that were built at the Bombardier factory in Barrie, Vermont were often interchanged with the Central Vermont which later became the New England Central at Montpelier Junction and were moved with their regular freights and on their own wheels. Transit and commuter equipment was usually shipped on flat cars. One problem with moving some cars on the rear is not having enough space above the knuckle to hook up an end of train device. Another said problem was that some equipment couldn't be coupled to a GE wide body locomotive because the diaphragm would damage the pilot of the GE. I also heard that not coupling them to locomotives with snow plows was for the same reason. Back in 2010, Canadian Pacific made four or five moves of brand new commuter rail passenger cars from the Bombardier plant in Thunder Bay, Ontario down through the Quad Cities for interchange in Kansas City, Missouri. They were for the New Mexico Rail Runner and the Utah Transit. Passengers are neither permitted nor wanted, so rarely, if ever, will you see occupied passenger cars on a freight train today, as the possibility of them getting hurt is just too great of a risk. And with today's Sue Happy Society and the railroad's increased interest in limiting liability exposure, I don't think you'll see it on a class-run railroad at all. If you do, the only two examples that I can think of are Amtrak's auto train and the now abolished Ringling Brothers Circus trains. A local short line might be willing to haul and occupy a car in a mixed train if they have their own passenger excursion service. Amtrak used to haul private passenger cars, but if you wanted it dropped somewhere besides the terminal where they were already adding or dropping cars, it was most likely moving by a freight train. And if some sort of keeper is deemed necessary to ride and keep watch over equipment, they're usually manufacturers representatives who are there to regularly inspect the shipment and or report any delays or exceptions in handling during the trip. You see this a lot with specialty high and wide loads, but rest assured that in these circumstances the shipper pays some sort of add-on to the basic freight rate for carrying that representative and for incurring the risk of doing so. On local and regional railroads you might see the railroad's own office car on the end of one of their freights, usually carrying officials on an inspection trip. As for the big class ones, nowadays they have entire office car specials for that purpose.